Hello, everyone, and welcome to our weekly Power Lounge. This is your place to hear authentic conversations from those who have power to share. My name is Amy Vaughn, and I am the owner and Chief Empowerment Officer of Together Digital, a diverse and collaborative community of women who work in digital and choose to share their knowledge, power, and connections. You can join the movement at togetherindigital.com. All right, friends, I hope you're ready for some magic to be added to your business strategy because today I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome a true innovator of business podcasting to our show. And I'm extra excited because I recently had the honor and privilege of being a guest on her fantastic podcast. Joining us today is Rita, the enchanting host of Bippity Boppity Business, a podcast that sprinkles a little pixie dust on the world of corporate strategy with a background that sounds like a dream career mashup from supporting luxury car owners like a Tesla and BMW to producing over 300 episodes across 13 B2B marketing podcasts. Rita knows how to turn business insights into pretty captivating stories. She is here to help and share with us how she weaves a little bit of Disney magic into hard-hitting business advice. And trust me, you all are in for a treat. Again, like I said, having been on her podcast been in a number of them, but there's just something about this creative angle and approach and way that you look at things, Rita, that just really brings a new perspective and makes you think about things differently. And so having experienced this firsthand as a guest on her show, I really can't wait for all of you to feel that same sense of enchantment and just feeling a little bit alive and more different about the way that we look at our business, our strategy and podcasting. So whether you are a podcast enthusiast, a Disney fan or a savvy businesswoman looking for fresh inspiration, Rita's got something special for you today. So everyone grab your mouse ears, grab your notepads. Let's give a warm welcome to the one and only Rita. Welcome to the show. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Amy. Wow, that that intro has me like blushing. I'm like, oh, so happy. Good. Um, you too. Me no, too. I, I thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. I can't wait to, to get into all of the, the Disney content business magic, this interesting yes. niche of all of the things that I love and who I am as a person. <laughs> yeah. And I love that you just own it and you own it so well. It, it was such a delight. I felt like once I got off of your show, like my face hurt from smiling and Yay. I just felt so good. And I think that, you know, I think oftentimes we, you know, as marketers are afraid to sort of lean into those unique and individual passions. And I just, I love it. I love it that you own it. You own it wholeheartedly. You lean into it. And for me, it was just a joy and a pleasure. So I'm thrilled to have you here so that more of our Together Digital community and listeners can experience it even more. <laughs> yes, I wore my pink blazer because I, love I knew this would be a safe space to do that. So yes. I love it. I love it. Well, let's get to have the listeners here and learn a little bit more about you and your background, yes. your journey from kind of a luxury automotive customer service to Disney inspired business podcasting host. It's pretty fascinating. Could you talk us through some of those key moments that led you to create Bibbidi Boppity Business? Yes, I'll try to keep it concise to tell a long story short, but sure. if you look at me, you probably don't think that girl worked in the automotive <laughs> car industry at any point. So as you can imagine, um, the journey wasn't very linear from when I worked at automobile brands mm -hmm. to now having my own business. What happened actually is, um, you know, my my family, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. And when I turned around 18 or 19, unfortunately, um, my family went through a change where my, my dad lost his business. Mm. So I was very young and I had to kind of grow up very quickly, try to figure out how to help everybody. Wow. I'm first generation uh, American. So my family, uh -huh. both my parents are from Lebanon. So they're, Im they immigrated here back in the day. Um, but anyways, so when that happened, initially I was going to school for music. I wanted to work for Disney. I'm, I'm a musical theater kid through and through. I had a full ride music scholarship. Oh, so wow. I was going and pursuing that dream. But then life does life things sometimes. Yeah. Life happens. So I decided I needed to do the right thing. And I needed to do what my parents wanted me to do to support them. And I needed to find a job that made mm. money and a yeah. respectable industry. So um, 
on Craigslist. I was literally 18 and I, I went on Craigslist because I didn't even know how to search for jobs right. at the time when I got the news that like they needed my help. I'm like, yeah. I don't know who I am. Right. I went on Craigslist and I found a job that looked very bougie. It was like director of first impressions was the title. It was for huh. BMW. And I'm like, okay, queen, I'm 18. I'm going to be a director. It's my first job. Like, <laughs> let's pop off. Let's go. Uh, quickly learned that titles don't mean a lot sometimes. And that was a fancy way of saying cute girl door greeter. That's what that uh -huh, was. Uh -huh. But I had my own office with my name on it. So I was taking pictures and putting it on my Facebook and saying, I'm a director of first impressions at BMW. I'm very important. I love it. Um, but long story short, uh, from my time there and from my time at Tesla, um, I learned a lot about customer experience. I learned mm -hmm. a lot about treating luxury clients. And I also got to meet a lot of people. And I found that I loved meeting people. That was mm -hmm. one of my favorite things to do in that role was just meet new people and hear their stories. Um, so that was just something on the side. But genuinely, um, one of the number one things that I that made an impact on me at BMW is I got to go through this training um, because I got a new fancy title called BMW Genius. I was really wow. rocking these like random, these ego titles for someone not even 21 <laughs> yet was like really it. doing something to my brain. So anyways, the BMW Geniuses, they have a program and they all go to like North Carolina and they get to learn about the business practices mm -hmm. and they get to see how the cars are made and, wow. and how to sell and what the technology is in the cars. So we were supposed to be like the Apple geniuses of the cars, mm. like only teach people about the technology in the cars and kind of be brand ambassadors for the next wave of high tech cars that were coming in. And the one thing that the trainer said is um, he asked us, how much do you think you can make off of one sale, like off of one customer, for example, if, you, if somebody sells one car yeah. and people were like, oh, you know, you can sell you can sell the most expensive car that we have is like one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So maybe you'll make X amount of commission from it and you can make this this much money. And he's like, incorrect. He He's like, you're not thinking about the long term. What happens if that customer has a child or what happens mm. if that customer refers their friend or their relative? Yeah. He's like, you need to consider the lifetime value of your customer. What is the lifetime value cost? Ah. And he said, on average, uh, our people uh, who work for this location, for example, their lifetime customer value is one million dollars. And I looked at that number and I'm literally broke as like I got two. <laughs> crackers to like like you know to my yeah. name basically and i'm looking at this number that says one million dollars on this screen i'm like this guy is off his rocker i have i don't believe him there's no way yeah but what happened is it's true i started seeing it and the thing you can say what you want about car dealerships and i definitely was the weird disney princess singing around the dealership that didn't belong there <laughs> but, the, but the thing that i really admired is how these sales representatives valued relationship and the touch yes. points that they took to make sure that they were memorable relationships that that on a birthday that maybe somebody that they sold four years ago, they're calling them on their birthday and they're telling them happy birthday. Yeah. Or if their kid played a sport, like they're sending a gift card for Dick's Sporting Goods, for example, mm. and congratulating them on their first winning game. Like they were so detailed and so committed to relationship building that yeah. I understood that lifetime value. And I didn't know it then, but with podcasting, those are the moments that will turn your guests into yes. just from a guest to someone that hopefully you'll build a relationship with if that's what you want. But basically, I had the moment where I realized I didn't want to work in automotive. <laughs> <laughs> and I moved back home, had a mini melt early 20s crisis, like who am I? What am I doing yeah. with my life? And so I decided that I wanted to, um, I wanted to either work for Disney because I hadn't yet. I wanted to work for Disney or I wanted to like travel the world. Uh, and I decided to travel the world in January of 2020, which is a really uh, hilarious time to do that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so I applied for Disney, got into the Disney College internship program. And then at simultaneously, I applied for some remote job for another agency that was doing like marketing and podcasting for people. I told my mom that I really wanted to obviously 
work for Disney my whole life. I've always said that. And my mom, Lebanese, dead in the eyes, looks at me. She's like, I don't think you should do it. And I was like, (laughs) excuse me? You don't think I should work for Disney? What's wrong with you? She's like, I have a feeling. I cannot tell you. I have a feeling. I'm like, all right, you have a feeling. So I listened to my mom. And yeah, I wouldn't be here today with my own podcast, my own business, had I not started the journey of working for that agency. While I was working there, I started my own show. And I started it because I was working with people in high ranking positions in Mm -hmm. B2B. And I felt like they were talking to me in alphabet soup sometimes, Mm. like UX, UI, I mean, you end journey, whatever. All these words were being thrown at me and I didn't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So to better learn about business and to better uh, be the producer that I was at at that time at that agency, I decided, heck, I'm going to start my own show for fun. And that's how Bippity Boppity Business was born. I was like, I understand two things in life and two things really well. I know that people need relationships long term Mm -hmm. in order to have a successful business and career. And I only, I have a special interest. I know everything about Disney. So yeah. I'm going to try to better understand business from the lens of these metaphors and analogies of someone who was a longtime fan and has gone to the parks. Mm-hmm. So in conversations, it naturally started happening with the clients I was working with. They would yeah. ask me like, well, what's, you know, our, our company's focused on a, you know, detailed guest journey, guest experience from beginning to end. So I'd be like, okay. Are you kind of talking about, is it similar to if I buy a ticket online to Disney Mm -hmm. and I go there and then from the moment I get there from the in the minute I leave, like it's supposed to be this like cohesive thing. And they'd be like, oh yeah, pretty much. I'm like, okay, now I understand what you're saying. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, Translate it for me. (laughs) Disney speak. (laughs) And Disney speak, right? Like, yes, I went to business school, but like they didn't really update the language to Uh match the world that we work in today. Like, yeah. 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 So that was basically it. I I, uh, decided that I'm going to try to better learn and go on that journey myself. And here we are, bippity boppity business. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Okay, so it's funny we haven't for the several times we've spoken now. This hasn't. I don't think this has come to light yet. My yeah. dad's Egyptian, so I can completely relate to like the whole <laughs> Middle Eastern daughter pressure of like, hey, responsibility, do the responsible yes! thing. Don't go work for Disney. That feels risky. Yeah, there's a lot of competition. So yes. let's be the doctor, lawyer, yes. <laughs> first generation kid pressure. And this I wasn't real, smart folks. enough to be the doctor or the lawyer. So they were like, bougie cars. We all like yes. BMWs. Don't yeah. work for BMW. It's so true. It's so true, guys. I'm not making fun of it. I mean, so my parents true. had BMWs forever, but like oh, yeah. you go around to like a Middle Eastern oh, like, yeah. kind of neighborhood and they got oh, yeah. their Beamers and all their it Mercedes. All it is. Arab money. Like Hell that's yeah. all it is. <laughs> even when I, we go back to Egypt, it's like all there is is BMWs. Even <laughs> yes. if they're like 50, 20 years old, that's right. like still all they are. <laughs> it's still a BMW though. It's still a BMW. <laughs> I love it. Oh my goodness. And then I love what you said about lifetime value. We're going to come back to that, I think too, but I just really want to touch on for those who are kind of sitting in the space of saying, you know, should I start a podcast? Shouldn't I start a podcast? Um, and you know, I love what you said in that moment of you really started it, not because you were already a subject matter expert. It was because you wanted to learn more Mm -hmm. and you took these kind of two passion points and this interest for learning and just brought them together and then leveraged the podcast for, you know, client growth and opportunity, but also for educating yourself. Because I will tell you, I a hundred percent agree after, you know, a hundred and plus, a hundred plus episodes on Together Digital's Power Lounge podcast. I just, you do, you feel like now you've just got like such a sense of wisdom from all of your guests, because that's all you're doing as a guest is facilitating brilliance and giving other people the opportunity to shine and you just get to be the sponge. Um, It's wonderful. And so I'm kind of curious too. you kind of started to answer this, but you know, were there some other ways in which the working with these luxury brands, you know, kind of considering that lifetime, like more longer term, less Mm -hmm. just maybe I would say transactional um, situation of luxury car dealerships and working in those spaces? How did that translate into um, you know, your business and bo- podcasting. 
Well, something that specifically I really admired, at least at the dealership that I worked at, is mm-hmm. they valued communication. And yeah. when it comes to the, the moment that a car enters the shop to the moment that it leaves, um, they have certain touch points and systems that they've put in place in order to make sure that every customer has this, a similar experience, but also receives um, the important communication touch points that they need mm-hmm. to make sure that their very expensive car is doing what it needs to be doing behind the scenes, right? So for me, I'm still working on this, and I think it's okay to admit that we're all every day evolving our systems and processes. But anytime when I think about the podcast experience for the guest, mm-hmm. or when I think about my clients who are, uh, you know, starting podcasts from scratch, I'm always kind of remembering those moments. Like what are the touch points that are the absolute most important touch points that we have to hit no matter what? And how do we continually innovate what the experience of receiving those communication touch points looks like? Mm. So one small example is um, at the dealership, for uh, example, instead of just getting like a text message or an email saying that your car is ready, the team started getting uh, the technicians to send personalized video messages to the uh, to the guests, customers, and sending them a video rundown of what's going on with the car and oh, wow. showing them the car. Cool. And it was so innovative and yeah. cool. But it was a small glimpse into the power of video, the power of yeah. communication more than just a just a non-personalized message. So really personalization, if anything, is something that's huge in the luxury brands, luxury industries that I am often trying to consider because Mm -hmm. personalization is the catalyst for relationship. If Mm -hmm. you do not feel that the person is authentically connecting to you or they are talking to you as a Mm -hmm. person, they're not going to want to talk to you. (laughs) Right. So in our process um, for delivery of the episode to our guests, uh, for our clients, I decided uh, we needed to find a more personalized way to deliver those assets. So what we started doing is creating custom Notion pages Mm -hmm. um, that have all of the Google Drive assets within the page, but it says says their name in the message, it has their photos. Um, We put quotes in there that are not just the graphics, uh, Mm -hmm. like the pre-made graphic quotes. We put quotes in there without the brand colors of the show in case they want to repurpose them in their own brand colors. So very small tweaks, but really to answer your question, um, what you can learn from luxury businesses and apply into your own business today is communication touch points, developing a system for that, Mm -hmm. but still making it personalized in a way that's sustainable um, and uh, pleasant for the guests to experience. If you're not smiling at any of the messages that you've received from the individual that you're working with, Mm -hmm. then you you need to reconsider maybe what your communication process looks like. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's such great advice. I love that so much. And I think that um, there's so many more tools nowadays that are, you know, at your fingertips, even for small business owners as well, to make like personalization an automized thing so that, you know, you think, oh, personalization, it's such a daunting thing. But when you're talking about even if it's like a weekly or biweekly or monthly podcast, it's not a heavy lift between the process, building in a process or finding automation tools to help you do that. It's yeah, it's worth it. It's absolutely yes. worth it in the long term. You're going to see the return. And I'm so glad you brought that up. I'm going to plug for just a second our national conference, which is like a month away. And it's a big topic. Our keynote speaker um, actually is talking about how personalization is the key to customer loyalty. And she just published a book on data driven personalization. We've got like, um, yeah, we've got a lot in the way of just talking about how personalization is such a big, big key factor. And I realize when we're kind of always swimming in data, it's kind of hard. Yeah. Um, but the tension between like customers wanting to feel seen and heard. And then also we have a panel on purpose driven marketing as well. But feeling like they're aligned with the brands that they purchased from. There's just so much to unpack there, Rita. You again, you're so- 
Such a I'm smart kind cookie. of a podcaster, you know. I can't stop talking. Cookie. I had to monetize it some way. <laughs> You're smart, you know. And I always love to joke about that too. It's like one of those things where it's like for all of us girls in class who couldn't shut up, and the teachers kept saying, "You talk yes. too much," or the adults that told us that we talk too much. I was like, "Hey, guess what? Now we get paid for talking." So, well, yeah. I have a quick story about that, just really quickly. Yeah. So, first day of school, freshman year, my English teacher asks everyone, "What do y'all want to be when you grow up?" Uh -huh. Typical. And I stand up because we're supposed to stand up and say it. And I stood up full with my whole chest. And I said, I want to be Oprah when I grow up. Oh, I love it. That's what I said. <laughs> I and everyone it. looked at me and said, girl, you're tripping. What are you talking <laughs> Oprah? This little awkward Lebanese girl with a unibrow? What do you I mean you'll be Oprah? It. What's wrong oh with you? Oh, my gosh. And I was like, you don't understand. She's an entrepreneur. Yes. She has her own talk show. Yes. And you will see. One day I will have my own show. You will see. You, you will. will see. You so do. I didn't end up on TV, but I did make my own the show isn't that funny you did you sure did you showed them so we're talkers <laughs> I and that's okay <laughs> that's okay we've got something to say and share with the world so i think use your voice ladies i love it oh my gosh this is why we get along so well we, had, I, we have even more in common than i knew before all right i would love for you to share a little bit about um a surprising lesson because mm. you've done a lot of b2b podcasts like 13 yes. 13 plus what was the most surprising lesson that you've learned about business through podcasting Business owners are afraid to show up authentically online. And mm. for me, this was surprising because, mm -hmm. um, again, I'm the former theater kid and I am used to kind of being on stage, used to just showing up in the way that I need to be to tell mm -hmm. the story. So for me, it's not about myself. It's about the story that needs to be told and the audience that needs to receive it. That's my mentality. Yeah. But a lot of business owners are afraid, especially in B2B when they're more traditional conservative industries, yeah. to to have conversations like this, just yeah. like this, where we're talking to each other, we're sharing education, but we're also sharing personal stories too. Mm -hmm. And I think that um that surprised me because isn't that what podcast podcasting is all about? Right? It's about the authentic stories Agreed. that we share that by proxy, hopefully those, if you're listening to us right now, you feel like you're in the room with us. Mm -hmm. And if you hear us talking right now and we're sounding like we're reading off of Webster's Dictionary or yeah. Yellow Pages, girl, you're not going to listen. No. <laughs> okay. So um, that's what surprised me is that it's mm -hmm. a constant reinforcement and, and coaching opportunity for the, yes. for the leaders that I work with to remind them that it's okay mm. to be yourself yep. in your content and maybe in other mediums of what you do that may not be appropriate, but sure. podcasting is a medium where that is welcomed and if anything that. required in order to be successful. I love it. I love it. We just had a question about this that uh, just kind of brought me back to in our Together Digital member Slack. I've added you to the channel too, by the way, Rita, because I know you're in there. <laughs> um, one of our members, Missy, was asking about putting herself in her like profile pictures for her mm. business for certain channels and things like that. And I think it does kind of lean into that fact of like, yeah, it's hard for us, I think, sometimes as business owners you know, um, and I get it. I was definitely in that. I, it took a lot of time for me to kind mm -hmm. of get into that space and comfortable with putting myself out there at the front, because also like, I feel like I represent the, the I, I'm here for the community. Like our yes. members are the the highlight. They are what's amazing about what we Amy are. Amy Vaughn for do. president. Yeah. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> but it's really about like them, right? So I'd yes. say I want to champion them. I want to feature them. But then at the same time, like there still needs to be somebody that's relatable that can represent at the forefront. Right. And so that is hard. So it's like kind of no matter what your business is, people still want to relate to, connect with, and do business with people. Right. So it is, I can totally understand. And I was, when you were saying that, I was like, Missy, I'm pretty sure you registered and you're listening today. So uh, <laughs> if Rita doesn't go back into Slack and, and re reiterate this, yes. I know you're listening today. So take that to heart as well as you're kind of considering all of these things. Because I know the question was positioned as strategic, but I also know behind it is that fear Mm -hmm. of putting yourself out there right. in an authentic way as as your business. So I, I love that advice, Rita. And I think also that is what makes you stand out 
in what you do. Um, and it definitely, I think also, I think it probably does something to bring the right kinds of business to you, right? Yes. Wouldn't you say? I would agree. And I also want to provide another perspective on if you are not yet in the mindset of being comfortable of putting your, your whole self on mm -hmm. camera, what I did with Bippity Boppity Business is it's not called The Rita Show because I, I didn't feel, no one knows me. I'm not yet Oprah, right? Yeah. So I decided, okay, well, Walt Disney himself, he wasn't initially the face of his brand. Sure. It was a mouse. Mm -hmm. So whether you turn yourself into a mascot or you are the face of your brand, there is creative opportunities to have something be the face of your brand. Mm. So if we think about a brand like Duolingo, for example, they are a software, they are technically uh, yeah. like a language learning software, and their mascot is an owl. Mm -hmm. So the owl is what's personified throughout their content. Right. So if you are not yet able to be just you and you're not comfortable, you know, saying that, okay, I'm not successful enough to be the Tim Ferriss show or the Oprah show or whatever. Yeah. Um, find a way to find a happy medium for sure. that. And for me, that's why my podcast cover art, it's like, I've got polka dots and it says like the name of the brand. Cause at the end of the day, I'm just trying to brand the stories. So, uh -huh. so just think about it like that. If, that's if you smart. have that, um, mental block like you know what's the what's the mascot of your brand like yeah. get fun with it get creative with it i don't know <laughs> i love it i love it i love it that's a great advice all right let's 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 dig into the disney side of things a little okay. bit more <laughs> get ready it. i I'm know so right <laughs> you're like finally <laughs> could you share some specific examples of how di the disney approach to your storytelling has helped one of your podcast clients better connect with their audience yes so in my journey of doing podcast development and in my journey of being a Disney enthusiast, I decided that I needed to understand what it was about Disney movies that made them so memorable. Mm. Like, what is it about the fact that I watched Ariel like when I was a baby and mm -hmm. now years later, it still means something to me and I still remember it. Yeah. And I thought to myself, like, if we made content that was that impactful, that was that memorable mm. to where somebody watched it once or twice and then they talk about it to other people mm -hmm. and and they remember it years and years later, like, wouldn't that be amazing? So at its core, what it is, is Disney combines um, story structure mm -hmm. and emotion. So if I can give you one piece of advice that I give to all of the clients that I work with is I want you to listen back to your episodes. And if you do not feel any type of emotion, whether mm -hmm. it's excitement, um, inspiration, um, you know, maybe FOMO, whatever it is, they, they could be positive or negative. Yeah. If you are not feeling any type of emotion after you've recorded your content, it's not ready. Mm. It needs some more work because mm -hmm. you are competing on an on in an online world where everyone's competing for the stage right now. It takes yeah. me back to my theater days of auditioning. There are many people that look and act and sound like you, but only you can tell the story from your perspective and mm -hmm. provide the emotional elements that we need as an audience to actually feel something. And what happens is when you feel something, you will act. It's mm -hmm. only when you feel something that you will act on that emotion. And isn't that what marketing and business is? It's yeah. not about the software. It's not about your uh, consulting service. It's not about the fact that you do marketing for manufacturers. It's the fact that somebody heard what you had to say and felt something. Yep. And as a result, wanted to make their life either better or uh, more easy or whatever it is, and then do something. Mm -hmm. And that story structure is it's the hero's journey, right? Yeah. So a lot of the movies that we watch, Hercules is a really great example of of a character who went on a hero's journey to find themselves. And then guess what? When he went on that journey publicly, mm -hmm. other people were cheering Hercules on eventually. In the beginning, they were kind of like, whoa, we don't believe in what you're doing. But over time, that kind of learning and sharing in public, that journey of getting to who Hercules really was, um, that's a relatable story, right? That was easy also for us to listen to. That's the other thing. 
Mm. We are busy, especially as women. Like we have so many things in our lives, whether you're a mom or you're in a committed relationship or you're the eldest daughter of a family who is always <laughs> calling you and asking you what's up. You don't have time to yeah. just be listening to very heavy stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can find the secret sauce of making your content educational, entertaining, and inspiring, you are going to create super fans of your content yes. and in turn, super fans of your brand. Because mm -hmm. something else that people forget about when we hear about Disney now is that when Walt Disney had to promote this idea of building the first theme park, mm -hmm. everybody thought he was crazy. Nobody yeah. thought he could do it. Mm -hmm. So what did he do? While they were building the theme parks, they created a TV show that took everyone behind the scenes of what was going on at the parks. Yep. Never before had a brand during that time, you're thinking about the 40s, 50s, yeah. whatever, where a brand was never that transparent before yep. on taking you on that journey, right? Mm -hmm. So your own journey today, maybe you're not building a theme park or a castle. If you are, hit me up because that's really cool. <laughs> right. um, but maybe you're not doing that. But we are all inherently curious and in seeing that hero's journey happening firsthand mm -hmm. because we all want somebody that we can celebrate. Everyone loves the individual who's just like us, who came from nothing, yeah. built themselves from the ground up and made it. And if you've experienced difficult things in your life, just tell yourself, this is part of my story. This mm -hmm. is going to make my hero's journey even better one day. And be resilient and own it. Find the balance between what you're comfortable with sharing and also making sure that you are learning something too at the end of the episode. I think that's a big problem that we have is often in podcasts, we talk a lot about the idea of something, mm -hmm. but we don't often dive into the tactical elements yep. of how to actually do mm -hmm. that thing. So if you find that sweet spot somewhere in between of hero's journey, emotion, and also teaching people something, you're going to have a really great time, first of all, because you're going to enjoy the conversation, but mm -hmm. also your audience will, will probably appreciate it. I love it. That's a great framework and a great series of takeaways. I love it. Yeah. That's so cool. And I know you mentioned this to me before, and it's, it's, it's one of those things that it's like, okay, whatever. Sometimes I can just be like, forget everybody else because, you know, <laughs> we don't have to be for everyone. Correct. Um, but I am kind of curious how you try to strike, if you do strike the balance between mm -hmm. like the magic and wonder of Disney mm -hmm. and what feels like, I don't know. Here's the other thing too. I just never try to take myself too seriously, but I think yes. sometimes in like corporate and business, we mm. do, we have a tendency to, right? It is yes. the nature of, of the thing. So it's like, how do you balance the magic and wonder of Disney? And then often that serious nature of, of business and the topics that you might be dealing with on your podcast. You ever, and I know you said you've gotten pushback on that too yes, at times. I have. And it's something that I will, I will always be advocating for, for myself. And if mm -hmm. you're listening, you will always have to do that too. Yeah. We, we still have businesses who don't believe in what I'm saying, who believe that you need to be professional. Mm -hmm. You need to keep work at home. You need to, you know, be this like, news anchor lady voice type person that's yeah. like really serious that talks like this on the camera. And a, for a long time, Amy, I felt like I had to be that way. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel good enough to make mm -hmm. content. I didn't feel like, you know, I felt like what I was doing was silly. I felt mm -hmm. like what I was doing really didn't mean anything. And it wasn't until I had people, listeners reach out to me in the world, like at conventions and stuff that I'd never met before, who would say, Rita, thank you so much for listening, for making this podcast. Like, this is the only thing I can listen to at the end of the day. I'm a lawyer. I deal with stressful cases all day. Aww. And your podcast is the only business podcast I listen to because it, it, I get to learn something and then I get to turn my brain off. Right. Yeah. So it's like, like, like you said, you, what you do may not be for everyone, mm -hmm. but if you are in tune with who your audience is and what your goal is for your business, mm -hmm. that's better. I'd rather you not be for everyone. I'd rather right. you be for one person. Mm -hmm. And once I got out of my own head and my ego a little bit and started thinking about the person listening to the podcast, the one person who's my, my voice are in their ears right now. That's crazy. Someone I've never been before. I'm yeah. like right there in their uh -huh. ear. And no matter what part of the day that they've had, like I get to 
be that one little voice that says Mm -hmm. it's okay to be different. Like you're, you're okay. Like Mm -hmm. you're more than okay. You're wonderful. And that's really what Disney magic and wonder is. It's not necessarily putting on a tutu and twirling. It's reminding us of the core values that we believe in and hopefully helping you in your journey of what those core values are for yourself, like figuring them out Mm -hmm. and starting from there. Because the beauty of business and the beauty of entrepreneurship is if, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you get to decide what you, what you will stand for and Mm -hmm. what you will fall for. And if you are, you know, still operating in the, uh, ways of corporate America, how they've conditioned us and taught us to be where we're all a cog in the wheel. I mean, mm. you, we won't ever get to have that beautiful journey and it's a difficult one. It requires yeah. growth. It requires, um, the confidence to say like, I am going to just be myself because Amy, what it is, it's not really about balancing the both. It's about me being comfortable being myself. Yes. And, um, and you know, there are some episodes where I look back and cringe a little bit. And, <laughs> and I, and that's the beauty of it. It's, you know, you can, you can always iterate. You yeah, can always improve. And how that's how we learn. Um, but I really think what it is, it's me allowing the guests to shine. That mm-hmm. is my biggest focus on any episode. So yeah. I like to say I'm the Disney and often the guest is the business. So I, I will bring out their magic yeah. and I will be like the sparkle and the seasoning on the top. Now, if it were the other way around and I was just sitting here zippity doodah singing the entire episode and the guest gets like two words in. Yeah, yeah that wouldn't be a great show. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I would encourage everyone listening right now, if you have a hobby, anyone, if you have a hobby or special interest, whether it's sports, crocheting, Legos, Mm -hmm. I don't mind, whatever it is, tea time, maybe you're really into teas, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're struggling to make content, specifically a podcast, think about your hobby first, then add this is the formula plus that with the business topic. And now you have a sustainable show because you get to talk about the thing that you love. That's very easy branding and theming. I mean, if I were really into teas like Bridgerton, for example, imagine a Bridgerton business show. Like, come on, right? Like (laughs) somebody starting that right after this, you know that now. Steal my idea. (laughs) Go for it. Chat it up. Okay. Because guess what? That's what branding is. It's combining the thing that you do with the aura of what you are, what you love. Love And when you go to events, you'll be able to lead with who you are Mm -hmm. rather than what you do, which for sales is very, very effective. When I go to an event, I don't tell everyone I have a podcast production agency and, you know, that's not like the first thing I say. They ask me what I do. I say, I'm a podcaster. My show's called Bippity Boppity Business. I love Disney. Yeah. I love Disney. Right. I start with Disney. Yeah. We're starting at a, a level playing field here. Not I'm you and you're here and we're all better than each other or whatever. So, and you'd be surprised how many genuine friends you get to meet when you decide to say like, I'm going to find a hobby or an interest and brand my show around it because mm-hmm. people at networking events are going to be more easily able to talk to you. Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. A couple of things because so much. I know. Um, Disney. Like, (laughs) I don't even care if you're not a Disney fan. If you have any understanding of just in general what uh, what business looks like and good business, I mean, a company that's been, it's over a century now, right? I mean, Mickey's (laughs) technically almost like, Steamboat Willie's like almost out of, um, what's the word? Um, It's like the trademark. Yeah, out of trademark because it's like a hundred years, right? He's old. He's old. (laughs) And you look at them from like a business success standpoint, um, they're their internal structures for teams and and Imagineers, their internship Mm -hmm. programs, their innovation, Mm -hmm. their customer experience within their parks. Like it's just undeniable. So it's like, I I don't even care if you're not a a fan of like the movies where it's so much more than that, which is I think why what you do is really smart. I love, love, love your podcast formula. I think that's so great because I also think it just it stops people because I'm, um, again, I'm like, okay, we are all human and we do, we love to talk and we're passionate about our businesses, but we're also human. And it's like, you kind of start to scroll through and you see, how are you meant to choose when every single podcast, like art 
square mm-hmm. looks exactly the same and they're yeah. all blue and their fonts are the same. It's like all these sans serif. And it's like, how am I supposed to pick in a sea of sameness? Choose yes. to stand out. Choose to stand out. And I really love what you said there. And I'm like, I'm just going to make a little audio footnote for our, for, for our production team <laughs> to just quote Rita, that idea of lead with who you are, not what you, with what you do. Because yes. we are so much more than with what we do. And people remember who we are, not yes. just what we do. And I think that just goes beautifully into our next question, because that is a ton of the advice. That's a, one of the first pieces of advice I give in networking, because obviously Together Digital are all about networking and the strength of our network, because it's such an essential part of growing our career and just ourselves, not just professionally, but personally. I'm kind of curious how podcasting has opened up networking opportunities for you, um, even your clients. Girl, it has opened up a whole new world. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Had to do it. Reason being, I live in Jacksonville, Florida. Yes, it's in Florida, but it's not a city that when you think of media, that is one of those top cities that comes to your mind, okay? Mm -hmm. So the fact that in my tiny little studio apartment, I've been able to talk to people all over the world, like That is amazing to me. And the reason why is I do have a strategy for it, okay? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people ask me, how do you get great guests? guests? How are you going to these events? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And it's very similar to a lot of what you preach, Amy, which is a combination of being active online and seeking out similar communities, seeking out uh, uh, the right people, right? But it's also going to events Mm -hmm. too. So For example, um, I do a little hack, okay? I'm going to give some secrets here. If there is a podcast guest that you really, really want to interview or alternatively, a person that you really, really want to meet that you wouldn't normally be able to meet, I, for example, will look at events that that individual is speaking at, okay? So for this example, there was an individual who – Uh, His name is Saul Blankoff. He's a Disney animator and director. And I saw that he would be speaking at PodFest. And the second that I saw that, I was like, I'm going to that talk. Everyone, just hold your horses, drop everything. I'm going there, right? Because what happens at events is oftentimes uh, you will be able to maybe at least for a minute get to say thank you to the speaker, right? That's your pitch. That's your one minute pitch right there. And if your show name is as effective as bippity boppity business. Oh yeah, you have, you have one. You have <laughs> one, one second. second. <laughs> you have one second to be like, oh, what's that show? If your show name mm-hmm. is not easy, is not easily explainable. Mm-hmm. Like if you have to like pull out a scroll and dust off the scroll to like explain what your show yeah. is about, you've lost your opportunity already. Mm-hmm. So I walked up over the show. Granted, I was not. I was fangirling. I was crying. Yeah. It was not Aww. okay. Um, I was so <laughs> I was so moved by this man's speech that I was like sobbing. Aww. But I was like, my show is bippity boppity business, and I would love for an opportunity, yeah, for you to be on my podcast. Like it was a mess, but I did it. Okay, and that's the thing you, you need to know is that you could do it. Do it scared. Do it anyway. Yes. Okay. But what happened is that one connection led to another connection. Mm -hmm. And it becomes this like web of Mm -hmm. one moment I'm crying in an Orlando convention room to this poor random director. The next I'm in LA and I'm interviewing the guy in LA of all places. So the strategy is write down your dream 100 people that Mm -hmm. you would literally lose your mind and sob just like I did if you got to meet. And whether it's on LinkedIn, you try to reach out to them and ask them to be on your show, or you go to an event where they are there, shoot your shot and make your brand ready to be pitchable, right? Um, And yeah, that's that's kind of uh, the thing that has blown my mind is the people that I've been, been able to meet yeah. I mean, I now have an international client from China. I would I have it. never worked with, and they are an amazing uh, foundation as well too. But like, mm-hmm. yeah, I didn't fly to China to meet that individual right. and their amazing business. I did a LinkedIn live stream where one person was watching. Uh, so that's the other thing too. For all of you who are doing this, they're, you're doing the work, but you are looking at your numbers and going, what's the point? It, as long as as you have the right people listening, yes. that's what matters. I would yes. rather you have 10 
super fans yes. that love what you do than uh-huh. a million people who could care less. 100%. Preach your hands. Yes. I agree. Preach. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Go back and watch Kenya Kelly. She's a TikToker who has made millions of dollars for herself and her clients off of her TikToks. And she even will tell you. She Mm -hmm. will tout those numbers and those dollar signs and those views. But even she knows. Like, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Like, don't come to me and say you want a viral TikTok. I will. I will. Even if I get you, like, a thousand views, all what matters is if you got, like, 26 phone calls that mm-hmm. and landed you 10 new clients. That's what matters. Like pay attention to the right metrics. I 100% agree, Rita. That's that's a very good call. Um, well, in B2B, that's a very uh, controversial topic though yes. because businesses of that nature want to know what the ROI is on sure. the amount of downloads and the growth. So right. that's something that I have to remind everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. It's a it's a constant drum we're beating, isn't it? Yeah, we, we, we love the data. We do. We can't we, help we it. We love our numbers. It's the shiny object. You have that shiny <laughs> object syndrome. And now I love that you also accost speakers. I'm glad this isn't just me. And that's how I've gotten some of my most favorite guests as well. Yeah. Well, and kind of more of those top tier guests because it's like I know they're there, I know they're speaking, and when you can kind of get in front of them, um, it kind of makes a more memorable opportunity and experience. They get to see yes. that passion, and then you know you've got your pitch. You're not going to get buried into their inbox. Um, I usually try to carry something with me to kind of give to them to you know yeah. be remembered as well, and then I typically follow up with an email. But yeah, I'm I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> I made little I made little Disney pins for my oh, brand, so I made it. like you know how pins are a big thing in Disney culture oh, yeah. in general. Yep. See, I did it. I did that for my logo. But something that I do in general uh-huh. is I will take a my phone and I will record a moment from their segment that mm-hmm. I thought was really impactful yeah. and I'll post it on LinkedIn the next day. Like uh-huh. I'll turn it into a little thing and tag them on it. Nice. So even if I don't have a physical object, there's Smart. also a digital object that you could give to them too. Love it. Clever, yeah. clever, clever. I love this so much. This is so fun. All right. And I like the dream guest list. list. I try to make one of those every year for myself as well. I think that's great advice. Speaking of more advice, let's talk about mistakes. What's one of the most common mistakes that you see folks who are kind of starting a podcast make? Um, They make it about themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, The other mistake is they are too long. Some Mm -hmm. of them are too long. Uh, And what I mean by too long is it's fine if there's a flow to the conversation. But if there is, I guess what I I need to rephrase that, it's length without intent and purpose Mm -hmm. is not effective. So um, the mistake is really not not viewing your podcast as a collective. Mm-hmm. not viewing it as an entire library, a full collection okay. of, of episodes. Mm-hmm. So often we are hyper-focused on the individual episode itself, but I would encourage you every now and then to take a look back and see like, what does your full library look like? Because if somebody has not yet followed you, yeah. the first thing they're going to do is judge the entire That's a collection. Great point. Absolutely. Is it cohesive? Is mm-hmm. it cohesive? Is it consistent? Or is it repetitive? That's the other thing. Mm-hmm. Rep- It's okay to be repetitive if you're doing it in a strategic way to ensure that your brand message or your mission statement is is being kind of um, taught or shared. Um, But if it's repetitive and and guests, like the similar similar types of guests. Um, Also, another mistake I would say is most people think that they have to start with a video podcast. Now, this is going Mm. to be very controversial. Back in the day, podcasting used to just be audio. Podcasting, yep. Remember (laughs) audio? Now, video is important, and I think video is great, Mm -hmm. especially for the clips. But um, I see someone in the chat. Her name's Katrina. She's asking about yep, we'll podcasting and all of that. But yeah, yep, we will, um, I promise. What, what, I'm going to touch on it briefly. And what I'm trying to say is podcasting can be an affordable way mm-hmm. to do content if you start audio. Yep. I would rather you start audio only mm-hmm. than not do it at all. Yep. And that's the big mistake is many people just don't start yeah. because they think it's too expensive, expensive or too difficult or they don't have anything to say. Yep. Um. If, if you do an audio only podcast, you can help that kind of fear of being on camera. Mm-hmm. A lot of us have a fear of being on camera or looking a certain way, especially as a lady. I feel like I have to look a certain way on camera. Mm-hmm. So I started my show audio only because mm-hmm. it was that like step 
stepping point into content and media. So instead of thinking about what you should do, I want you to think about what you could do. That's oh, I all it. I ask. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. And to kind of build on that, let's get to Katrina's specific question so we can kind yes. of touch on it a little bit more because I know it is a common kind of concern. The She says, I, um, I know what I'd like to do for a show, uh, tech, women, uh, tech for women to how to stay safe from hackers. Sounds yes. very needed. But as I'm just starting my business, I have no budget. How much should I expect to spend to hire a podcast editor? I'm not techie. And how do you recommend finding a producer slash editor? My show would be a combination of solo and interviews. Very good question. First thing I would say is make the decision to determine uh, before you even hire an editor or consider your budget, you need to understand the medium in which you are recording. So mm -hmm. video and audio or audio only. Um, if you decide to do audio only, the cost will significantly go down in the beginning because there's a lot of tools out there where you can actually learn how to edit your own audio, especially with AI. Okay. Um, I recommend using a tool called Descript, yep. and it's Agreed. it's a tool that I use to help me with edit editing my show. It's great. Um, we'll get into that later, but that's that's the first thing: figure out audio or only. Secondly, um, if you have a strong brand presence online where you've already been building your personal brand, reach out to potential sponsors. I had a show that I worked on where they didn't even have one episode, and we made a sponsorship deal in order to help that show exist. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is find a an industry adjacent to yours. Usually, software or tools companies yeah. are are more open to sponsorships yeah that um, want more women customers exactly that want to keep them safe from hackers <laughs> exactly and pitch and say hey you know my current brand i have x many followers i have this level of engagement already we're about to launch a show um i would like to request uh uh, X amount of dollars a month and start small for your first sponsor. Even if it's like 50 or a hundred dollars yep. a month to start with having one sponsor logo will create this like kind of ooh, oh, yeah. effect. And then somebody else, yeah, somebody else will want to hop on it too. Right. Yep. So, um, you know, if you don't have the funds right off the bat, before you stress too much about the budget, see, see what, see what's out there. Mm -hmm. Who's, who's willing to work with you. And in that package say like, Hey, like you are going to be my preferred vendor. If I prefer, if I, uh, work with you and you are the sponsor of my show, anytime somebody asks me about X tool resource or software, you will be the primary one. I will not uh, recommend anyone else. Exclusive. At Exclusive, right? They like that word. Exclusive. They like that <laughs> word. I was looking for that word. I don't know where it went. Um, and yeah, and see see where you can go. Realistically, mm -hmm. though, if you want a video podcast and you want clips, I would say um, if you if you work with a producer, an editor, and somebody who is. I would I need to pause actually and describe the difference between a producer and an editor because yep. I think this is a very big misconception. Working with an editor is going to be cheaper because yep. working with an editor will the editor will take exactly what you say, they will take that work and they will edit it exactly how you tell them, whether it's right or whether it's wrong, especially on platforms like Fiverr and whatever. Those are very affordable places to go when you start and I recommend starting there. But as you figure out your topic, you're going to start to grow and you're going to need a creative partner to help with the growth of your show, the outreach and the branding of your show. And that's what a producer does. A producer mm -hmm. is going to tell you no sometimes. They're not going to say yes all the time. I'm a producer. I'm going to work with you, for example, and any producer will to help bring out the story of mm -hmm. the show. We're going to coach you to be the talent. We're going to be looking for opportunities where you can be, um, you know, highlighted on other shows, maybe, for example. So working with an editor is very important in the beginning, and it's going to be affordable, especially on places like Fiverr. But as you grow, if you want to work with a producer, that's where the price is going to change because you're going to be leveling up to having a creative partner and uh, someone who understands a little bit about marketing as yeah. well, too, with, with the show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so 
on the low end, I'd say around maybe $150 per episode mm-hmm. if you're going really low and you're doing some of it yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the high end, it could be anywhere from $300 to $1,000 an episode if you're working with the producer. And also it depends on the type of podcast that you're doing as well. If you have an interview-based podcast, those are more affordable to produce. Mm-hmm. If your podcast is narrative, where it sounds more like an audio book, or yeah. we're telling those like Disney-esque, you know, sound effects stories and the zhuzh, zhuzh and all of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, those are just going to be a little bit more, obviously. But I would recommend start audio only, start small, mm-hmm. find an editor on Fiverr, go on YouTube, look up Descript's YouTube video tutorials. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I, uh, you know, I'm always on LinkedIn. If you have a question, I'm happy to answer it for you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And you can always reach out to me too. Happy to share some other, like, the whole Process community advice. is yeah, here for you. Yeah, we're always here. We, again, we share our knowledge and our power. We don't hold back on any of it. I think uh, process is an important part when you're just getting started to kind of having a well-defined yes. process for bringing in your guests just to make things easier on yourself if you're running a business plus hosting a podcast because mm-hmm. you just you don't have the resources maybe to hire people to facilitate all that. So put process in place where there's maybe instead of people, if you can. Um, I also used for a little while before we ended up with our production team, our amazing production team that we have now. Um, Shout out to the amazing HeartCast media team. So you can look them up if you want to. Um, Yeah, uh, check them out. Um, But Opus Clip was also really cool for kind of pulling and extracting video clips. But I mean, I would say too, like if you're going to invest in anything to start with, I would say actually just make sure you have like a good mic and a good headset to start with. Oh, for sure. Picking up like (laughs) your initial quality for sound to start with and making sure that you have a good recording space. Like, and there's so much good info, like free info on creating a good podcast out there that everybody has kind of like shared um start there really too and then i do a descript is a great great tool and it's pretty low cost too as far as like getting your transcripts getting you know sound bites and also kind of editing as well so great great advice you know if if anybody else has any other questions don't be shy about asking we love 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 the questions that's why we have our live listeners with us i'm gonna go ahead and skip to our power round because we're coming close to the end rita so and i know we've got some fun ones in here yes so all right we're gonna put you on the spot with some of these i know it's like choosing your children but favorite (laughs) disney character in the business lesson that they teach Belle. She was different. She owned it. People it. made fun of her at first, but then she lied all of them. So bam. <laughs> I love it. It makes me so happy. She's like in my not my daughter's favorite right now. She's like all all about Belle. Yes. All right. Well, most unexpected place that you have found inspiration for a podcast episode. A guy who owns an automotive shop. Yeah. who also happened to be a Disney fan. That Aww. was like my two worlds full circle Colliding. coming together. <laughs> I love that. That's fantastic. That's yes. fantastic. I love it. I love it. I love it. Check his episode out, Frank Scandura. It's a really good one. Oh, <laughs> I definitely will. It sounds adorable. It sounds delightful. One tool that you can't live without for podcast production. There's another little good tip for Katrina here. Yes. Um, Google Forms. Yes. Underrated. <laughs> <laughs> right? Under every day. I use them every day. Really great for getting guest information and it mm-hmm. going automatically into a spreadsheet. Cause if you're not a numbers girl like I am, yeah. that's so great that it does that for you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Holler for forms and automation. I'll tell you. Yes. What. <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> fantastic. All right. Biggest challenge in B2B podcasting and your quick solution. Um, biggest challenge is looking like everyone else's show. There's a lot of podcasts out there right now. Mm -hmm. Quick solution. Uh, yeah, try to be different and use some of the formulas that we talked about today and, um, and, and see, see what it does for you. (laughs) I love it. No, those, you gave us some really good takeaways. All right. We have got just enough time for this last one. So, um, I know you said you had your dream list and you've gotten some of those folks interviewed, but is there any remaining if you could interview any business leader? And they, let's say they could be alive or dead. This might be making it too easy if I say (laughs) dead. On your podcast, who would it be and why? It's Walt Disney. I was going to say, and once I read the question, I'm like, wait, no, of course I know who it'll be. He was someone that decided that he would change an industry entirely. Yeah. Animation would not have been what it is today mm-hmm. without Walt Disney, yeah. period. Yeah. So um, 
if anything, if I could leave some inspiration with that, like Please. We, we look at him and we think he was successful and everything was easy. He was somebody that continuously had to overcome challenges. Mm. He at one point lost all of his employees. He almost went bankrupt. Mm. He had to take loans out that his wife was like not happy about. Yeah. His brother almost like was like his right, his, his right hand man for business and finances. His brother almost like was like, we're not doing the theme park, right? Mm. And he had one dream. He started, it all started with a mouse, right? Mm. So for you, if you are listening, you have an idea that only you believe in and you deserve to see it through, to be the visionary that at all costs continuously pursues that dream and find the magic in that. You are the magic at the end of the day. Don't let anyone else tell you differently. And those are the people that maybe 10, 20, 30 years from now will be just like, you might be that person where somebody says, I wish I could have interviewed this person. Yes. Being yourself and continuously believing in your vision and your dream is is the only thing you can do as an entrepreneur when the going gets tough, but mm -hmm. just know that it's worth it and you're worth it. So your show should be a celebration of that. And I can't wait to see that journey for you, no matter what it is. Thank you so much, Rita. What a great way to wrap things up. So excited to keep watching you and all that you're doing. <laughs> Thank you for inspiring us all. I know you're all ready. It's Friday. You got the weekend to keep brainstorming and planning. Yes. You've got members, you've got both me and Rita on Slack. So if you need us and you want to brainstorm, just, you know, Slide on into our DMs, reach out if you need us. Again, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate all of you, our listeners, for being here. Rita, thank you so much for showing up and sharing your power and your passion. We really do appreciate it and enjoy it. It's a pleasure. It's been a magical podcast episode. <laughs> thank you, Amy. Never doubted that it wouldn't be with you. All right, everyone, <laughs> have a great rest of your day. And until then, we'll see you next week. Keep asking, keep giving, and keep growing. Bye, everyone. Produced by HeartCast Media.